Um, if you are not permanently signed into the Smug Mug website, when you type in the the URL for our club, it is Wichita Area Camera Club dot smugmug dot com. And when you type that in, if you are not already in, um, sometimes you will have a. If you're not a member and you're not signed in. This is the screen you're going to see. Um, is everybody sitting in front of a computer that they can get to this URL? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so we're going to start here. So this is where some of the newer members are getting kind of lost. And I've reached out to Smug Mug to see if I can change this. And the answer is no. So from this point, we want to log into our club website as a member. So in order to do that, we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And on the right side in the corner, down at the bottom, it says powered by Smug Mug, owner login in little tiny characters. And we're going to click on. Now I've got. That I want to use, but when you have this up. It's not going to have anything in it. It's going to be empty like this. Has everybody got this? Yep. All right. So from here, you're going to type in our information, which is going to be wacctphotos at gmail.com. That's our user ID. Now, if you don't have another Smug Mug account, I recommend that you click this little button right here that says, remember me, because then you won't have to remember the password every time you want to sign in. So if you've got that checked and you've got everything typed in, you can hit log in. Would you hit the, would you tell me the, the uh, password again, one more time? Absolutely. Log in. And it's going to think, and it will log you in. So this is where the fun begins because this is another change that Smug Mug made and I've asked if I can change the way this comes up and the answer was no. So the first thing we see is the library. And as you can see from our club's library, there are 54,602 images and videos in our library. Um, a lot of these photos are somebody's photos in the club who has their phone that is backing up to their gallery. They have a folder under their name and they have all their phone pictures backing up. Um, any of us can do that, but if you're gonna do that, keep in mind that anybody that logs into this website under our club can see your photos. So please keep your clothes on. All right, so from here, if you wanna get to the home page, the next thing you're gonna click on is photo site. And that will take you to our home page. Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now you can tell you're logged in a couple of ways. One, over here on the left, you're going to have a big green upload button and you're going to have these three links, photos, organize, and photo site. The other thing that's going to help you know you're logged in is you're going to see our club logo over here in the right hand corner. Those are your two keys. All right. So we're going to navigate around the home page. Um, and I've added a couple of things here to help members and help people coming to our club page, you know, hoping to find us and find a way to join us. Um, and I, I just did this last week. It was kind of fun. Learn something new. Um, so anything you see on the page that's in blue letters is a link. Okay, if you scroll down, you will see some of our history. And at the very bottom, there's another blue link. That blue link will take you to the N4C Photo Club Council website. So we'll go back up. Membership application. If you are a member and you have never filled out an application, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to open the application. This is why I want you to fill it out if you've never filled one out. 
all of this information is is required on the form. It won't let you go through it, um, I think, until you get down to here. But the really important stuff that goes into the membership directory that is only visible by members that are logged in um, is your personal information and all the stuff that's on this form. None of this stuff gets put out in the public. A club member has to be logged in to see it. Um, I am planning on changing the password every year and sending out a new password so that we, we kind of keep up with the membership changes. Um, so the reason I want this filled out is, A, Steve, as the treasurer, has all the club members' information that he needs. B, Dwight has it for N4C because we have to pay dues to N4C and we have to know who the members are and what their addresses are so that Dwight can keep that record with Steve together. The other cool thing is when I update the member directory, I can put this information, your website, the camera stuff that you use, the software that you use, and your interests underneath your picture in the directory. So if somebody in our club is looking for somebody else that has the same interest or uses the same kind of equipment and they want to ask questions, they have a way to find somebody that is similar to them that they can reach out to. So that's the form. Yeah, let's do it tomorrow afternoon. All right, so that's the membership application link. The next link that I added last week was the pay membership dues. Dues are um, due October 1st. Um, and we did and, raise uh, the dues by $5. So that my brain's out. I'm trying to get on the computer now and do a Zoom meeting, and it's a pain in the, you know what? I can hear you. Me too. Let's see. All right, so the pay membership dues is, if you want to pay your dues and you don't wanna mail a check to Steve and you don't wanna to come to the meeting and bring cash or check to Steve, you can click on this link. This link will take you to PayPal. When you come to the PayPal screen, it's going to have a set dollar amount in here, 36.80. That is the $35 dues for the, the upcoming year, along with $1.80 added to that to cover the amount that PayPal is gonna charge us to get those fees back in our account. So if you've got a PayPal account, you can click that link, it'll take you here. It will only charge you 36.80. It will not be a recurring link um, and it will not let you pay less, but it will also not let you pay more. And then you're good to go. Um, I will get an email through our club account that, that it's been paid. I will forward that information to Steve and at the next meeting, I will give him the cash. That way we've got a good record of everything. And I will also send you an email response uh, as a receipt that we got your payment. All right, there is a search. There's a couple of searches. I might take this one off because there is this search bar up here and they functionally do the same thing. However, if you're not logged in and somebody comes to our page as a non-member looking to purchase pictures, they're gonna need this one right here. I'm going to show you what this search for photos does. So we're going to type in penguin. Type in penguin, hit enter. It is going to bring up any images that have penguin in the title or the keyword or the comments. And it's going to show them. This will be important later in the class when I start talking about how we have the opportunity to sell our images. All right, so you click on home anytime you wanna come back to the home page, just like any other website. Navigating around our page. I'm always gonna have this information right here in the middle between our logo and the award that we got for our website um, from N4C so that when people come to our website or when members come to the website, everybody can see what we have coming up for programs. And if we have upcoming programs that I've already got scheduled, I will also have those listed. And you guys know I've been putting the, the photo challenge here. If you, again, if you click on the link, it's gonna take you to the gallery. Click on the homepage to go back. All right, photo challenges and outings. This link is gonna take you to the monthly challenges that I'm setting up. The out, any outings that we do, I will set up galleries so that members can upload photos from those outings. Um, and it's got some older 
um, galleries in it as well. I, I have made some of our stuff um, invisible just because we had, I think this site started in 2009 or 2010 and there was a lot of photos. They're all here, they're, they're all still there. If somebody wants to see an older year, I can always make it visible. Um, but on the back end for, for practicality and lack of clutter, I, I hit them. So we go 2019. Um, N4C, Dwight is the one that's um, supposed to be updating this. I'm going to be working with him to get this a little bit better updated. Uh, as you can see, he's got folders in here. Some of them have pictures, some of them don't. So I wanna point a couple of things out. This icon, that's your folder icon. Smug Mug works in a couple of ways. Um, they work in hierarchy. So the first thing you do is you set up the page where you want to have your pictures go and you do that by creating a folder which we will do once you have the folder set up you can set up additional folders for instance if you want to set up a travel folder and you want to set up a black and white folder you can do that or you can set up a gallery when you see these little pages that's called a gallery you can have seven layers of hierarchy the home page is considered your first layer Everybody follow that? Any questions? Yeah, that, that was one of the things that tripped me up. So what's the difference between a folder and a gallery, I guess? So you can't dump pictures into a folder. You can only dump other folders or start a gallery. Okay. And we'll get into that when we go, we'll get more into that when we get into the member gallery thing. Okay. All right. So the N4C folder is still a little bit disorganized. It has not been an area that I have focused on to get organized because I've been working on other things with this page. Um, member galleries. This link, if you're logged in, you will see this folder over here on the top left, right under member folders, you're gonna see this member directory and numbers. If you click on that, it will open the folder and you will see, if you're logged in, two things. You will see a membership directory, and notice it's a gallery, so it's got pictures in it. And you will see this single page. That means that it is a page that has text on it only, or a page with text and a photo or blocks of things that whoever created it put in it. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the member number list. So remember, I am under member galleries, I'm gonna go back to the home page and take us here. So member galleries, click on it. Member directory and numbers, top left, click on that. And you only have to click one time to open things, just like a link on, on other pages. And then we're gonna open the member number list. Um, now I believe that Dwight has some updating to do. I think we have some new members that are not on this list yet. But uh, at the last meeting, I emphasized that we all need to be trying to enter pictures into the N4C competition. In order to do that, you have to know your member number. Your member number is this WA number. And you can find yourself by just scrolling down, depending on how long you've been in the club, um, you will find your name. If you're newer, you'll be towards the bottom of the list. So I'm 122. My number is right down here, WA122. James Mitchell came in right after I did. And if you keep scrolling, you will find your name. Um, how many of you know how to use control F on your computer? Or if yeah. you're on a Mac, I believe it's command F. So if you hit control F on your Windows machine or command F, I think on your Mac and you type in, we'll look for Tom Gosson. It pulls him right up. You can search for text any on any website by using control F or command F. So if you don't want to scroll through this whole thing and you just want to find your name, you can use that function to find it and it will work. Any questions on that? What is control F? The control button on your keyboard, hold that down and then push the, the letter F at the same time. What's that stands for? Find, it stands for find. Stands for, stands for find, control F. So you just hold down the control button and then James, you can type your name 
And you can just type your last name or you can type CPP. Thank and you. And it'll pull you up. I already did that. All right. So little trick to find your name if you can't find it or you just don't want to scroll through 180 people. Um, and we do have some people to add in here. I'm, I'm seeing that we don't have everybody. Um, we don't remove anybody from this list. And the reason we don't remove anybody from this list is because of the way this list is set up within 4C. So we have to keep a record of all club members, even if they leave or they are deceased. And I, I believe there's four people on this list that are deceased, maybe five. So um, now if we wanna go from here and we wanna go back to the galleries, we just click on the member galleries link and it will take us back to where we are able to see all of our fantastic club members here. So we're gonna go back to this folder the member directory and numbers. We're gonna go back in there. So click on that folder. Am I going too fast? No, you're fine. All right. Now, remember I said, if you're not logged in, you will not see this member directory gallery. And it's a gallery because it has the three little pages. Notice it says unlisted. If it says unlisted, that means anybody that is not logged in in our club cannot see this, they will not they will not see it, they will not be able to open it. So we click on it and it takes us to the member directory. And I believe Dave Carter asked me if the pictures that we took in June are, are available. Um, Dave, your picture is right here. And I will be happy to send you that picture. James emailed the pictures to me and I put them in here. And um, we have a couple of duplicates. Charles is here, Gerald is here. Um, I didn't take the old pictures out because I wasn't sure if you wanted them in the directory or if you wanted them um, just for your personal purpose. But um, you guys logged in as regular members cannot delete anything. If you put something, if you upload a picture and you realize that you uploaded it in the wrong place or you decide you don't want it uploaded, um, you just need to send me a note and I'll show you how to mark that picture so that I know it's the one you want me to delete. You send me an email and say, hey, I uploaded this picture, please delete it. And I will go in and delete it. Um, the reason we have that set up so that only the administrators can delete is because it is really easy and smug mug to delete 56,000 pictures in one click. So we'll, we'll just avoid that problem. Um, so remember I said the information on the membership form is important. That information goes right here. So we have a title, we have all the information, and we have keywords. And this information is where, it, if you were going to do a search and you were looking for somebody that uses a Sigma 28 to 70 lens, you could go into that search bar on the home screen and you could type in Sigma 28-70 and it would pull up anybody in the directory as long as you're logged in that has that keywording or that information in their description. So it should pull up Al. Any questions on the membership directory? Nope, okay. So I'm gonna go back to member galleries one more time. This is where the club members have access to store photos at no additional cost. It's included in the membership for the club. There is not a limit to the number of photos that you can store. There is not a size limit uh, on the photos that you store. The only thing that you can't put in here is raw images. SmugMug recently started giving the ability to save raw images and upload them into SmugMug, but they charge quite a bit. So we are not going to entertain that. Um, but for storage purposes, if you want backups of your pictures, you can set private so that nobody can see them but you. You can set them unlisted so only club members can see them, or you can set them public so that people can look for them and potentially buy your pictures or you can share them with other people. So we'll go through those options. And uh, anybody in this call that doesn't already have a folder set up, I'm gonna have you hopefully get one set up while we're on the call. And anybody that has a folder set up, if you wanna play around with yours while we're doing this, I would, and I would like you to do that. 
All right, we're gonna come back to this page. So I'm gonna finish going through these links. Organizational galleries, club shoots and exhibits. It is what it says it is. If we go um, on a, you know, the club shoots, these are some of the older things and exhibits that we've had. Um, one of our members, Bruce Ward, anytime we did an exhibit, he would take pictures of everybody around. Somebody took a really awesome picture of me laying on the ground at Botanica, pretty sure it was Dwight. So you can go through and look at these pictures, but they're just here for, for people to see. Um, go back to organizational galleries, tutorials and videos. This one's gonna get modified because some of these videos are out of date. If you are interested in some Lightroom tutorials, um, I think in 2015, Bruce Ward did a couple of tutorial classes in Lightroom and we all met at a library and everybody brought their computers and we went for a couple of Saturdays. He recorded the entire thing and he went through and just went through the basics of uploading pictures into, you know, ingesting them into Lightroom, doing the basic edits, using the tools, you know, what to do, what not to do when you're putting them in Lightroom. So that's there. Um, if you want to go through it, you're more than welcome to do so. It's there for all of our members. Uh, the Smug Mug how-to video is going to change. Um, if I can get the YouTube channel set up, I will put a link on our page, on our homepage for that YouTube channel, and I will be moving these videos to that YouTube channel because Smug Mug has a limit on the time that a video can be. I think it's a 20-minute video maximum and like three gigs. So putting all this stuff on YouTube, if I can make that channel private for the club, will, will probably be our best option and I will move those, but I will let everybody know. Um, judges training tutorials. Again, that's something it's, it's unlisted, which means only people logged in can see it. And there's just information about that in there about how to judge pictures, you know, from a competition standpoint. And then there's how to enter club competitions. We aren't doing club competitions currently. The only competitions that we are doing are the ones within 4C. Um, I'm not gonna get into it. It's time consuming, but it's just not something that we're doing right now. So I'm not gonna go whole hog into this, but you can go into this. It does show you how to upload pictures if you forget once you're back without me. All right, competition. This is where all of our competition stuff was stored. It's still here. Competition rules are here that we used to have. Um, I just left this folder here so you guys, if anybody wanted to go back and see prior competition pictures, they can. And the last link at the top is contact us. If you have somebody that isn't in the club that's interested and you don't have my contact information, they want more information about it, you're not sure what to tell them, you can tell them to go to our website you can tell them to use the contact us link. It will send me a notification that they've sent me an email and I will be able to respond right away. I check my email probably every 15, 20 minutes unless I'm on the phone. So um, there's that. All right, going back home. Still good? Uh -huh. All right. <coughs> so we're gonna start going to member galleries. So remember, I have the ability to delete and you do not. So I'm going to create. If you have a folder already set up and you want to do this again, feel free to create it. Um, just put your name as delete so I know what to get rid of. All right, we're going to start with organize. Up in the top uh, left, in between photos and photo site, you're logged in. You're going to click organize. That's where we start. Hmm. This is going to show you the entire site map, everything that's here. And you can open these just like you can in your, in your Windows folder for your Documents tab. Everything just breaks out. <clears throat> and you can see the hierarchy. This is your first, your first page, your first, first box of the hierarchy. Then you have a folder that's two. You have another folder that's three. And then you have these little pages. These are galleries. Galleries means there's pictures or video. That's four. We could have added more folders here if we needed to, um, but there wasn't a need to, but that's only four layers and we can go seven. 
So I'm going to close that up. So when you're here, you want to be on member galleries. <laughs> From member galleries, you're going to be on this folder so you can see all of this. Is everybody with me? Amen. All right. Now, if you've got, like I said, if you've got a folder already set up, but you want to play along, feel free to set up another folder. So from this page, you're going to click on create over on the left. Remember, you need to be on member gallery. If you can't see all of these folders with all of these awesome faces, you need to get to this spot before you click create. So you're going to click create. And you're going to create a folder, a space for storing galleries and other folders. So create a folder. Now you're going to give it a name. I'm going to name mine Pat Delete. You can name it whatever you want. We are going to have the opportunity to sell pictures from our website. So this is where things become really important when you're posting your photo photos on the site. The title of your folder, if you're going to separate it by subject or location, um, can be important. Your initial folder just needs to have your name on it. That way the club members can find you. Um, the metadata in your folders is also searchable. So the more information you can put when you're creating a folder or creating a gallery, the easier it will be for anybody searching for specific things to be to find your picture. Just like if you're looking for stock images on Google. So meta description, for beauty photography and then I put my hashtag you can put keywords um, again this is just a folder this is just my folder the keywords are not super important to me on my main folder where I'm going to start dumping my images put your picture so in order to put your picture here that picture has to be on our site um, or it has to be on your machine. So if you click that icon, you can find yourself if you're in the directory. For instance, um, I'm going to use Dave Carter. I'm going to go to member galleries. Remember, I went home first and I clicked on member galleries. Uh, oh, it's not visible. That's not going to work. Hey Pat, go ahead and use mine. I don't. I did never put any up, but I have a, a folder there, but uh, nothing's in it from Bob Dilla. Okay. See it up there on the top row. Up. One more. This is being weird. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Yep. No items to pick from. So if there's no items to pick from, you just have to go back until you can find a place that has images. Now, I think that that member directory, because it's private, is not going to let me see it. Oh, I didn't make it. I don't even know how it got there. <laughs> what, your folder? Yeah. Do you want me to delete it so you can make one? Yeah. All right. All right, bear with me for just a second. Now you're going to see what I see. So I have a lot more stuff on mine. You even have a lighthouse gallery. Yeah, but there aren't any pictures in it though. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete Bob Dila's. I'm going to show you how easy it is to accidentally delete multiple things, but I'm not going to delete them. So don't worry. Okay, so I accidentally clicked on three different things and I didn't unclick them, just in case anybody decides to get a Smug Mug web page on your own. So I've got three things selected, but I'm not really paying attention. I hit delete. It brings up this warning delete three folders. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I don't want to delete three folders. I only want to delete one. Cancel. If you are in a hurry and you start clicking through in Smug Mug, you will all of a sudden delete stuff that you didn't mean to delete. 
Don't freak out if you get your own Smug Mug page and you do that because Smug Mug's help desk is phenomenal. I, in, at the beginning, deleted a folder. It had 10,000 pictures in it with two clicks because I was in a big hurry. Mm. I emailed them and said, oh my God, can you get these back? And within two hours, they were all right back where I had had them. So I have one folder selected. You can see one selected. I'm going to delete it. Delete forever. Are you sure you want to say goodbye to Bob Vila? Yep. See you, Bob. <laughs> Does anybody else want me to delete a folder? No takers? All right. Now, when you're in this to where you can add folders and galleries, if you want to get back to see what it looks like from a standpoint of viewing it on the website, this same process will work signed in as a member. You're going to view on photo site. You're going to click that and it's going to take you right back to the way it looks as though you're signed in as a member. So I'm going to log back out real quick and log in as a regular member. All right, so we're still in member galleries. I want to organize, so I'm going to click on organize. Member galleries, you can do it over here or you can do it up there. Did everybody see how I did that? So you can select it over here by using the drop downs to get where you want, or you can pick one of these folders. Member galleries is right there. You just click on it and you're back. All right, so I'm in here. I want to create a folder. Create. So I'm going to name it Pat Delete because I didn't finish that one that I started. And I'll just put SFB just to get something in here. I'm going to hold on the, on the image. Okay. Security and sharing. This is where it's important. If you're a member that does not want anybody to see your pictures, this security and sharing visibility is where you need to make your change on your main folder. If you don't want anybody to see any of your pictures, um, unlisted anyone with link. If you click that, your folder is not going to be visible. Now I'm gonna back myself up because it makes your it makes your folder visible to people in the club when they're logged in. It does not make your folder completely private. We can do that when we start uploading pictures to galleries. So when they open your folder to see all of your photo galleries, they won't be able to see them. So security and sharing, it's either going to be public for anybody logged in or not, or unlisted, anybody with the link. And you can create a password. So to go a little bit further into the security against what I just said a little bit ago, if you don't want people in the club to see this, you can absolutely restrict your, your folder and all of your pictures with a password or people that you choose and you can send them in, invitations. I leave all my stuff at anyone with link because if somebody wants to buy my pictures, they can find me. If I want to share something with family or friends, I can just grab the URL and send it to them. Web searchable. You either want people to be able to find your pictures on the web or you don't. So it's either no, I don't want them to find it or site setting, I do want them to find it. Smug mug searchable. That is the search box that we used earlier where I showed you to type in penguins and it pulls up all the penguin pictures. If it is smug mug searchable <laughs> site setting, they will be able to find your pictures based on the information that you have in your title, your keywords, and your descriptions. If it is no, they won't. I typically leave all my stuff public unless I have a client that doesn't want their pictures to be visible online, and then I mark it, I mark it so that people can't see it. Everybody follow so far? Mm -hmm. All right. Create that folder. So it took me directly to my folder. Now I have two, I have a couple of options. I can create and I can create a gallery and start putting pictures in the gallery, or I can create another folder. I can also upload folders directly from my desktop. So if I have a folder on my desktop and we'll use We 
we'll use this one. Okay, so I have in my 2021 Supercross, I have 2021 best of moto. So I'm just gonna click and hold on that and I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna let go. And now it's gonna upload those pictures. And they're all, they're automatically gonna be in that folder in their own folder. Hey Pat, yeah. is, there, is there a limit on size or format for those to go in there? There is not a limit on size. Um, the limit on format is JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs. Okay. So I'm going to back out one step so you guys can see what just happened. So I created my... Come on, mouse. It's over here. It fell in at the end, which is fine. They'll always fall in at the end. I do get in here periodically and re-alphabetize everything. Um, so... I click on my folder. I want to see what's in it before it goes live. I have not clicked here. Once I click here, this folder goes live. So I'm going to click on it. Member galleries, pat delete. That's my folder. When I uploaded that folder of photos, it automatically created a photo gallery. And it gave the title to that gallery for what I had on that folder. So if I click on that, let's say I don't like what it says. I don't like what it's labeled as, settings. Now I can change my title. I'm gonna leave the title the way it is. Motocross, best of 2020 and 2021. Now this is where the keywording gets important. I don't know how many of you use uh, Instagram, but hashtags are big. And the more hashtags or keywords you give stuff, the better. And, and you probably know that just from posting stuff on other websites or whatnot, you know, dirt bikes, dirt, whatever. Now, here's where I can do a feature image because I have created a gallery that I have access to. So I can click on and I can pick a feature image. This is my absolute favorite of, of all time. So that's the one I'm gonna use. Everybody following so far? Is anybody setting this up on their own? I'm good. Okay. Security and sharing. Don't change your URL, by the way. Let the URL create by itself. That's this one down here. Just let that one create on its own. Security and sharing. Visibility, public, unlisted, access. You can change who has access. So it can be seen by anybody. It can be seen by members only, but then you can limit that access further by requiring a password or sharing email, sharing the link via email. Guest uploading. Um, I have used this in the past on my personal website because sometimes I do collaborative shoots. Uh, Rick McPherson and I shot three days of um, middle school football several years ago. So I gave him a guest uploading link so that he could upload his photos and any photos that we sold that were his, I could give him the money and I'd know they were his because of the way he labeled them. Um, I don't anticipate that any of you will want to do that because they have to be able to log in to upload pictures. Mm -hmm. But in the event that you get your own smug mug page or you have one, you can do that. Web searchable, we went over that already and the smug mug searchable. Hide the owner. The owner is you. So if you don't want anybody to know who took the picture, if your camera is set to show your information, you can turn this off. You can turn this on and people won't be able to see that you took the picture. I leave that off because I want my shoot for beauty photography to come up on Google. Photo protection. So um, maximum display size. So if you're not going to put a watermark on your picture, people can go in here and download your pictures without permission. We don't necessarily want that unless they're family and friends. And we've said, Hey, just go in and grab these pictures. I uploaded them for the whole family. So you can do a couple of things. You can change the size of the display. So if they download the picture, they will get a smaller image. If they screenshot the picture, 
and you put it in as a 0.3 megapixel picture, it will look like dog crap if they try to print it. And that's OK. You can right click protect your picture. You can turn this on. And if they try to right click and save your image, when, you, when they right click, it will give them a message that they need to buy the picture. It won't let them save the, save the image. They can still screenshot. They can still screenshot it or use the snipping tool, but they won't be able to save it. You can also apply a watermark. If you do that, you have to create one. Um, or Smugbug will apply. It's really nice uh, original, which is not always fantastic. So if you use the default, you just leave it. If you're going to create one, it's going to take you. It's going to probably keep taking me to this page for some reason. Maybe it's not going to let you guys create one. All right. Well, we won't worry about it. If you turn the apply watermark on, you will get the default. If you need a watermark made, you can send it to me in a PNG and I can put it in. That's probably set for a, I didn't realize that the create watermark was probably an administrator. But if you want one, we can, we can get it in there. I do use watermarks on my motocross pictures. I don't make them super intrusive. They are at the bottom, but they do take up a good third of the lower portion of the page. So that if somebody does screenshot my picture, um, I at least get photo credit for the image. The other thing you can do is you can add a download button. If you wanna sell your pictures, I would recommend not doing this. If you have pictures where you want family and friends to be able to download the images or you don't care about selling them, you can turn the download button on you can even require a password so that family and friends can download the pictures for free as long as they have a password, but anybody else has to buy it. So if you want that, you just have to click on for the password, put in a password, remember the password, and then you can share that. Hey, Pat. Yes, ma'am. This is Brenda. Yeah. Um, if you have a watermark already made, I'm sorry, I jumped back. Uh, can you upload that through that apply watermark? Like yeah, if you have a file that has your watermark in it. It looks like it's going to let me do it, but, but not you guys as members. So it would be something where you'd want to send me the watermark and I could upload it into whatever galleries you wanted it in. And if okay. you want it on all of them, um, I can, I can, once I create it and when we get to a different point in this, I will log out as a member and log in as an administrator and, and kind of walk through that. Okay. I'll show you how the watermark works. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Moving on to social sharing options. If you want somebody, if you want visitors on the web to share links to the photos, um, this one is important to just leave on. If you don't want your photo shared, you can turn it off. Allow comments. So the comment part is, is interesting because when somebody leaves a comment on a picture in, in SmugMug, um, the only person that gets notified of that comment is the email address associated with that website, which means WACC Photos gets the notification. It does not tell me, as the administrator, who left that comment. So if you guys go into somebody's pictures, or you're going into a gallery, pictures of the month, and you're going to leave a comment, please put your name in that comment so we know who the comment came from. All right, we're going to get to later as well. So I'm just going to kind of breeze through this, but there's some basics in here. There's a visitor shopping cart, which means you're going to let people buy pictures. There's a shop view that I have never really used. Um, and it just kind of gives people a different experience on the sale, sale process. There's a proof delay. I do use the proof delay. I usually set it on two days. Um, I am checking the WACC club email daily. So if we were to start selling pictures and you put a proof delay on it, I would see it and I would have to reach out to you because I know it was your pictures based on where the picture came from. And then you and I would have to work together to get that proof delay set up. What that does is um, when you set up sales online for prints, people can pick any print, any size print that's available based on the print company that we're using that's associated with SmugMug that you have selected you want available for them to do. And as you know, 
if you're shooting standard out of your camera, you're getting a two to three ratio. And if they want to shoot, if they want a picture eight by 10, it's going to slice that picture. The reason I have the proof delay on there is so that I can go in and make sure that the way the customer has cropped that image or didn't pay attention and didn't crop it at all, move the crop and they're cutting off half of their kid. Um, I can move that crop and reach out to them and go, hey, did you mean to do this this way or would you like me to fix it? So I put that proof delay lay on there so I don't have an upset customer calling me and saying, you know, your print company cut off half my child. It's just kind of a safety thing for me. Um, for now, I, we're not going to mess with the boutique packing, but it they can gift wrap orders. It costs money to do that. To me, it's not worth it. Um, personal delivery means that instead of shipping it to the customer, they're going to ship it to you, which means it's going to come to me. I don't want your stuff because I don't want to deliver it. So for the club site, we're not going to use the personal delivery. But if you set up your own Smug Mug account, you definitely could do this if you were the person that wants to meet everybody in person. Brand packaging. Uh, again, I'm not going to set this up for us at this point because it is another expense. And print marking, same thing. Um, we're not going to do that either. If you guys decide you want to sell pictures and you want this stuff, let me know. We'll go over the costs. The back printing is the same thing. It prints information on the back that you choose that you put right here. They do charge extra for it. So there's that. All right, appearance. This tells us how the viewer of your gallery or any of the galleries where photos are at on our site are gonna look. We are currently in the majority of our um, galleries where pictures are located using the Smug Mug default. On my website, I use Collage Landscape. And the reason I do that is because it shows the full size images and it just fills the entire page. And I can, to me, it just looks a little bit better than a slideshow. For the club purpose, we use the, we use the smug mug because it gives us a, a block of pictures on the left side of the screen and a giant picture of the one that's currently selected on the right side. And it makes it easy to go through the, the members' pictures to see what everybody's uploading. So you can change this however you want it to look in your own gallery. So I'm since this is my gallery, I'm going to change it to collage landscape. And my gallery cover image is on because I want a picture on the front. All right, so I'm going to select that picture. Everybody with me still? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to pick my good friend Josh and his viral goggle helmets. So that's going to be my gallery cover image. Now I can sort the pictures if I want to. Most of the time I don't want to. Um, I can sort the direction that they are going. For instance, if, if they're all labeled and I want them in numbered order or alphabetical order, I can change the sort. I can show my camera info. So this is going to give you all of the XF, IPTC, XM all your metadata is gonna show up. If you don't want your metadata there, turn it off. If you want your pictures to be searchable based on metadata, some photographers do. Uh, the wire requires metadata, leave it on. Show file names. If you give your pictures really strange file names that work for you so that you can find them, I would not recommend showing file names. I leave mine off. My file names don't usually make any sense to anybody except me. Uh, slideshow. If you leave the slideshow on, the customer can click on one image in the gallery and they can watch it as a slideshow by clicking a play button. If you want them to have that option, leave it on. If you don't, turn it off. These are all personal decisions that you make for what you want your galleries to look like. If you have GPS enabled on your phone and these are phone pictures, or you have GPS enabled on your camera, so it shows on your metadata the information about where you took the picture and you want people to be able to see your where you took the image, turn it on. People can search by location in Google. So, you know, if, if Google picks up that a keyword or a GPS marking has been tagged for Jefferson County Courthouse in, in Golden, Colorado, your picture, because you've got it here and it's a public gallery the way I have this set up, 
is going to show up when somebody Googles Jefferson County Courthouse in Golden, Colorado. I have a couple of images that I took there. And because my GPS was on, when people Google that, it comes up. If they look up Jefferson County Courthouse on Google Maps, it brings up my pictures. Um, kind of a neat way to get your pictures seen. Not necessarily the way everybody wants them to be seen, but it's available. Smart rules. Um, we're not going to use the smart rules. It's something that is a little bit more complicated, gets into a lot of different settings. If you're going to set up your own site or you have one and you want to know more about this, let me know. We'll get into it on a different level. So we've got everything done the way I want it. I've got my title, my description, my metadata, a feature image. I've got my security set. I want everybody to be able to see my pictures. I want them to know who took it. I've got my protection set. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on just for now so you can see the, the default watermark that's applied. We'll see if it works. Um, so I've got everything set here. So I'm gonna click save. All right, now I've saved it. I'm not gonna upload anything else. So I wanna see what it looks like. I'm gonna click view on photo site. When you are done uploading pictures, you're gonna do view on photo site. There's my feature image. That's the one I wanted to have show up. Everybody following me so far? If, yep. You're, yep. if you're making a folder, tell me if I'm going too fast, okay? All right, so I wanna see the pictures in this gallery and see how they look. I'm gonna click on them. Huh, look at that. So here's a fun fact. And I, I did do this on purpose. It's kind of like Facebook. So because I'm using the collage landscape. That, that image that I said I wanted to be my main image for this gallery needs to be kind of like the image you put at the top of your Facebook so that it only takes up the small portion. I'm really okay with this one because it shows one of his new sponsors, which is St. Louis Tattoo Company. So I'm not going to change it. But if I wanted the whole helmet to show, I would have had to pick a different image. So you can also not select an image and, and this smug mug will just pick one for you. But this is what my gallery looks like when I set it up in collage. Notice it's putting proof on these images and it's happening kind of slow. Smug mug sometimes is a little slow in the background, but proof is showing up. That's going to be the watermark if you leave it as default. It's just going to say proof right across the middle. And if they click on it, it might come up. <laughs> Someday her prints will come. The funny thing is I'm on fiber, so it shouldn't be this slow. Maybe it's loading. Uh, Windows thinking. That's Final <laughs> Jeopardy. <laughs> we'll hit refresh and see if it's. It still hasn't got proof on all of them. So it is thinking. These were fairly large files. Hey, Pat, while we're waiting, uh, if we had a, a panorama that we stitched, say about four or five of them, say of a large landscape, uh, is that uploadable in that yep. in that format? Yep, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right, so my proof came up. Now remember I said they could watch this as a slideshow. So over on the left, um, we can go full screen. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of just not needing to. If somebody was here looking at my pictures and they wanted to see a slideshow of them, they could click on this play button right here over on the left. If they wanna see the metadata, the photo details, they're gonna click on the little circle with the eye and, and you guys can do this on any picture on our website. So you click on the eye and you can see my camera info. Click show more. It's gonna give you all of my metadata. Everything, everything in my camera. It even tells you who the author is. So that's your owner. Now I also have copyright information attached to my photos that doesn't show up here. So if somebody were to buy this picture, 
because I have a copyright on my images through my camera and it's in the, the EXIF data, if they buy this picture as a digital print and they go somewhere locally specifically and print this image, the print shops that pay attention will see when they go to print this image that it's copyrighted and they will ask that person for a photo release before they let them have it. Walmart is probably the worst offender. Mm -hmm. Some of them do it, some of them don't. Um, I have never gotten pictures from CVS or Walgreens um, and I haven't had any customers that printed their um, there is, I always forget the name of the store over at Central and Edgemore. Gosh darn it. There's a print shop over at Central and Edgemore that does one hour. Picture they do perfect. professional. Yes. Picture, picture perfect. perfect. That's right. Yep. And I've used them a handful of times and their products are great and they're super fast and they're really nice. They have computers in store. So if you're not sure how it's going to look, you can take it on a flash drive, drive over there, put it in a computer and have them look at it with you. And they'll tell you if you need to make any adjustments to make it print right. Really cool people. Um, it's cheaper to order online than it is in person, FYI. So we can see all the information. Now, let's say I wanna add information. This is my picture, it's my gallery. and I wanna give it more information. I don't have this picture with a title or a caption. So I'm gonna name it Josh Garner. And then I'm gonna give it a caption What's a good caption for this? That's probably my worst thing. I'm not good with captions. Flying high? Yeah, yeah. Flying high on YCF. He's on a YCF bike. YCF USA. They're the ones that gave him that motorcycle. And then you'd want to give it keywords. Again, all of this information, the title, the caption, the keyword, any of this information on here is all searchable the way I have this set up. Whether they're searching on our site using that search box or they're on Google. All right, you want to hit save. Okay, now the other thing that a customer can do if you've got it enabled is they can share this image. They click on the share, here's the link. They copy the link, they can email it to somebody, they can text it to somebody, or they can put it on Facebook, Twitter, or there's an email button. They can also embed it somewhere. Um, I don't know that anybody has done that with my pictures. Here's the place for the comments. Remember I said it doesn't ever tell you who left the comment? Always put your name at the end of the comment so that they know who it is. And then don't forget to hit post if you comment on a picture and rate it. All right, I'm not gonna save that. That'd be weird. Okay, <laughs> download. If you have it to where the customer can download your pictures um, without a password, they can click on this and it's going to bring up a screen of, hey, where do you want to download this picture? It's going to ask them. As long as they're only doing one image, it will do this. If they do more than one image, it asks them for an email address and then it will send them a link to a zip file. So it'll let them download. And then we've got tools. Now, not this one is not going to be accessible to people that are not signed in, but it is accessible to all of you. So if you are looking at your picture and you're just not sure you like it, and for some reason you decide you wanna edit it in Smug Mug, you can do that. Um, I have not used it. So I don't really know what's all what all is here. Oh, hey, look, we can put a watermark in. It's gonna let me choose one, no. All right, we can add color effects. We can crop it. This one's square because I use it on Instagram. We can rotate it. We can also update the location data. We can set a new location or we can remove the location. So that's kind of cool. Free, simple editing software with uh, Instagram filters. There you go. So we can go through the pictures and they all have this really awesome stamp right in the middle of them if you want it. Okay, so I have completed I have created a folder and I have added a gallery. Does anybody have any questions about how to create a folder, how to get a gallery? Everybody's good? Sort of. <laughs> sort of? 
right. What questions do you have? No, no, well, I, I'll just I'll just do it later. Go ahead. You can keep going. Remember, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this video so you can always come back and just. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, it. okay, that's what I want to do. Then that's right. great. That. So I'm back in my folder. I'm gonna organize it. I'm gonna go. So I'm in my folder. Did everybody follow that? I went from the member galleries, and I was on the I was on the website. I'm on the member galleries. I just want to look at my folder. I'm going to click on Pat Delete. It's going to open my folder now. This is going to make life easy on me because I'm already in my folder. I'm going to organize it. If you organize the folder before you are in your folder. It will go back and make you find your folder over here or over here where all of the beautiful faces are looking at you. So there's my one gallery that I've uploaded. If I want a folder for transportation, I'm not going to go through all of the stuff on here. I'm just going to save it. Now I have a folder for transportation, but I want to see what, what left where it says organize. This is just like Windows hierarchy and, and Mac hierarchy. You just go back a folder right here. Or you can do it over here on the left. Find your folder, just click on your name. It'll show you what's in it. So I have a folder and I have a gallery. My recommendation here is if you're going to make, if you're going to upload multiple galleries of different topics, and you're gonna have galleries like, like for instance, Jim Boots, and we'll go in and look at his real quick in a minute. Jim Boots has a folder for travel. And in that folder, he has folders for locations or galleries for locations, depending on how many times he's been there and what kind of things he photographed. So remember I said, you can go seven layers of hierarchy. You have the home site, Member folder, member galleries is two, pat delete is three. This folder right here is four. I can still go a few more layers in. So I can either add in this folder, another folder, a gallery or a page. Now, if you wanna add a page, that's a little bit different. Um, and I'm not sure that you can do it from here. Nope. So the best way to add a page is to do it right when you make the, the folder and it opens. There is another way to do it, but you have to be in administration to do it. So I'm going to create a folder so I can show you travel. OK, create new. We already did the upload folder. That's how we put my gallery of motocross pictures in. We're going to create new, but instead of, oh, it's not there. I could have swore I saw a page. Am I losing my mind, guys? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Yep, I am. OK. No worries. I'll go back to that when I get to the administrator site. You can upload the, you can create pages. A page is text. Um, a page can be, for instance, I have an about me page on my website. Um, you can have a pricing page. You can put those things in your, in your folder so people know more about you if you want them to. You don't have to. If you want one set up, I can, I can walk through it with you guys. If you're going to set up your own Smug Mug account or you have one and you haven't done that yet, you have questions, just let me know. All right, any questions on setting up galleries, folders? Does the hierarchy make sense? So this is currently what my disaster of a folder looks like. Because when I started with the club, I didn't understand Smug Mug. So I was just jamming stuff in here because they said you have free, free online storage, upload what you want, wherever you want. So I kind of sort of started making these galleries. And then I got my own website and said, oh, I probably had a. Um, and I have a lot of pictures in here, but I don't have as many. I own site. So 
you can upload as much as you want and you can organize them however you want. It's your folder, do what you want to do and, and just enjoy the free storage. It's free backup. Um, I mean, obviously if somewhere down the line, the club for some reason just can't stay together and we lose the site, you lose your online storage, but the photos are really easy to pull off of the website. So, you know, just be cognizant, but you've got backup and it's free. All right, so we're gonna go back to the view on photo site. Does anybody have any questions about anything? All right, so there's a few things I wanna to touch on um, about what not to do. Please do not edit the profile. Over in the right, you can click on the club icon and you can edit the club's profile. Please do not do that. Um, the account settings, it really won't let anybody screw this up. Um, but this is kind of neat because it shows us how many views in your current month we have had on photos and you can get the details. So we've had 9,790 views on our pictures on our website for the month of August. And then it tells you the pictures and how many photos were looked at on what specific day. And it gives you all this cool stuff. So you can, you can do a lot of, um, you can do a lot of research on your pictures. If you're gonna upload photos to sell and you're gonna physically actively advertise that those photos for sale, you as a member can go into this account settings tab and look to see if people are going in and looking at your pictures. So if I wanted to see if somebody was going into my pictures, I could go to gallery details, I could select the gallery Member galleries is where my pictures are. Find myself. Look up whatever it is I am hoping people are looking at. I don't advertise this site, so I'm going to guess that nobody's been to these pictures. I'm going to select a gallery and say done. And then it's going to take its time to load, and it should give me information that probably says nobody's looked at my images. And this might take a bit, so I might have to stop it. But it should give you what you want to see. You can also, oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. So this is telling me who's looked at what, and if they've downloaded a picture, or um, if they've saved a picture, so somebody's looking at my stuff, which is kind of cool. So there's a lot of statistical stuff that you can get in SmugMug. There's more if you're the, the main account holder or the administrator. You can also see comments. I had no idea that we had so many comments on photos until I finally got into our um, WACC email. And then there was like 1,500 pages of stuff going all the way back to 2013. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So it said we had one waiting for approval, but this says we don't have any waiting for approval. That's kind of strange. And here it lets me see all the comments. So the most recent comment was June 26th. And I think that this comment was by the person that took the picture. So if I wanted to go, if I wanted to know where that picture is located, I can click on it. So you guys as members can do this too. And you can go in and see this image and you can click on the photo details and see whatever data they've allowed to stay. And if there's any details, um, you know, I don't see, I don't see a title, but yep, there's no title. So I'm not really sure who took this picture. Um, well, I did, uh, Pat, and yeah, that's one of the problems I have is I don't know why I have trouble getting the title and the caption. Okay. And it all ends up as a comment instead of the title and a caption. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. 
So um, if you want to add a title and a caption, this is this is where you would do it. Go into wherever you're loading the picture and click on the image that you want to add the title and the caption to. Um, and then you can click on photo details and then add your details and it'll bring this up and then you can save it. Um, the reason that my motocross picture had that information on it already is because um, one, I keyword in Lightroom. Two, I use photo mechanics to call my images. And in order for me to even entertain the idea of selling on the wire or um, to a magazine, I have to have a lot more information on my images. And photo mechanics lets me put a lot of stuff in there. So my pictures typically, at least since the middle of last year when I started using photo mechanic, will have a lot of information on them for that reason. Because I want if somebody from Yamaha or KTM or Husqvarna is looking for a picture and they Google, I want my stuff to come up. Mm. So it took me right when I went from the comment, clicked on the photo, it took me right to the photo, what gallery it's in. Latest version of voice match. To do yes. that, notification I just sent you. <laughs> Your phone is talking to me. All right. So I'm going to go back to the photo site or I'm going to go back to home. Photo site and home are going to take you to the same place. So I'm going to click on the home. There's a few other things that you can look at here. You can look at the apps. You can look at the perks. SmugMug does offer some discounts um, on a few things. So I'll put the plug in for SmugMug. Um, you get a discount for PixArt. If you don't have Creative Cloud and you want it, you get a discount on Creative Cloud. There's some other stuff here that they give discounts for. You just follow the link or click on it and it gives you, gives you a code that you can use. Um, so there's all that stuff. All right, you can also look at the different plans and the features and, and see what kind of things are available. Um, people on SmugMug create stories. So if you wanna see somebody else's work that's not in the club, look around, get some ideas, you can click on stories. So remember to get here. All I did was click on the icon up in the left, our club icon, and I went to Smug Mug Perks. And that takes me right to this other site. To get back to my WACC page, I'm just going to click on this Wichita Area Camera Club link right here. And it's going to take me right back to where we started when we logged in as members, to where I believe we can see Dwight's grandkids playing soccer. So. Um, I, I don't encourage anybody to just scroll through this photo page because again, we do have a member or a few members that are backing up their phone pictures. So is anybody interested in doing that? No. No? No. Okay. If you, if anybody is, develops an interest to back up phone pictures, let me know. I can show you how to do it. It's pretty easy, but everybody will see them. So please wear clothing. Okay. All right, so we are back to the main page. We have gone through the entire page. Does anybody have any questions about what to do? Yeah, Pat, I have one. This is Bob. Okay. Um, if we load up, you know, if we put some pictures on there, uh, one, my question was, I know you went over it, but I, I don't remember. How do we protect it from, say, being stolen by someone? I, I know that happens out there. And yep. when, when we upload them, you, there was something on there about doing it in a real small size, like a third of a meg or something like that. Right. So I would encourage doing a couple of things. So I'm going to go back to the gallery. And... I'm going to go into mine again. We'll go into this one. So I have let my normal gallery and smug mug um, on the club's page kind of stay consistent with the way the club in general has their stuff. So this is the standard smug mug layout. So if I want to change the, um, the security on the pictures in this folder, I'm in this folder and I think, mm, I don't really want people to be, just be able to download these. I'm going to click Organize Gallery. That's going to drop me right into my gallery. So anytime you see these standard squares where you can't see the whole image, you know you're in your organization style. It says Organize right over here on the left. And 
this is where you want to change your settings for this gallery. I'm not I'm not changing the settings for my folder. I'm changing them for this gallery only for my birds. Okay. So I'm going to go to settings. And then I'm going to click on security and sharing first. This is where you're going to set who can see your pictures, who has access, and if they can be searchable on SmugMug or the web. The next one that's really important is your photo protection. The photo protection is where you're going to change the size of the display. So if you want to change it to 0.3, you can do that. You can also protect it by putting the right click message on. You can apply a watermark. And if you don't want people to be able to download your pictures, don't turn it on, leave it off. So I'm going to show you what this is. I'm going to take the watermark off so it doesn't take so long to load. So I'm going to save this. All right, so I've saved it. Now I'm going to view it on site. That's going to take me right back to what everybody that's not me and you guys when you're logged in as a member sees. So I'm going to click view on site. Now it changed the layout because now these are itty bitty pictures. So if you want them to be able to see full screen, the images, you can leave them as originals. If they go to do a screenshot, for instance, um, I'll bring up my snipping tool. So if I wanted to snip this picture, there is no way if I snip this picture and save it that I'm going to be able to print this anything worthy of being printed. It is going to look grainy and crappy. Now, remember, I right click protected. So if I right click here, it says these photos are copyrighted, copyrighted by their respective owners, all rights reserved, unauthorized use prohibited. It will not let me. Uh, maybe it will. Oh, it's saving it as an HTML. So if they click enough, how did I do that? I must have clicked right off the black, right off the picture. If they right click on this picture, it's not going to let them save it. Okay. Now if I click on the word, it's going to let me save it. But it's going to save it as an HTML. So they're not going to have an image. When they go to open that, what they think is an image, it's just going to take them right back to the website. Yeah. It does have this option though, because I do have a shopping, I do have a price guide set up for us. So it's going to give them an option to buy this image. Now, if they buy it, um, they can buy it as a digital download with a commercial license or a personal license. So this was the next part of my presentation. They have two options as a commercial license. They can buy it as an original files, full size file with every pixel included, or they can buy it as a web size image. The prices are different. I'm not encouraging anybody to use this sale stuff yet because I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page on how much our images are gonna be if we're gonna sell them. So I just set this up so that I could show everybody. But if they want to buy a single photo download for commercial use, full resolution, if they bought it right now, it'd be $35.95. All right, prints. Lots of print options. This is why I have the two-day delay for proofs, so that as members or people that are going to sell pictures, we can go in and make sure that they crop the image the way it's designed. Panoramic sizes, I do have those available on here as well. Squares. We've got wall art. We have desk art. We have keepsakes. We have albums. We have greeting cards. They can buy multiple photos. So there is a shopping opportunity. Um, and I'll get a little bit more into that when we get over to the administrator side, because that's the only person that can change the buying options. Um, now, if you're using the Smug Mug standard gallery, remember on my picture, all that information wasn't visible on the page unless I clicked that I for information. This one over here on the right, if you can see it, but it was over on the left side of the screen. If you're in this view, all of that information, Ken, to add to your pictures should be right below your images title, um, description, keywords, comments. And you should just be able to click on whatever line it is you want to edit and put the information in. 
Okay, thanks. All right. So I'm going to go back and change this gallery because it looks really weird. You don't have to change the size to protect them. Um, I will say though, if you leave it as original and they do screenshot your image and you don't have a watermark on it, um, obviously the, the bigger the screenshot, the more mega, the, the more kilobits, whatever it's called, megabits they're going to get when they save that image. It's still not going to print great. Um, and I have learned that if you use the snipping tool on an image and you post it to Facebook, it looks really bad. So it'll pixelate pretty terribly if they do it and, and jam it on Facebook. Okay, did that answer your question, Bob? Yeah, that did, sure did, thanks. All right, cool. So we'll go back to view on site. Are there any other questions about anything that I've gone over from a what membership? Was, this is Jerry, what was the password and name of the site? Okay, so the name of the site uh, to get here is Wichita Area Camera Club dot smugmug dot com. You ready for the username? Yes. The username is W A C C photos at gmail.com. Got what? The password? No, W-A-C-C -C photos. Nope, the password is W-A-C-C -C loader, like a skid loader, mm -hmm. page, like a page of paper. Yeah. And the, the one just before that was Wichita Photos dot W A C C photos at gmail.com. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I'll, I will, um, I have my outline together. So all this stuff will be on the outline too. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to go now, but thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Um, all right. I'm, later. I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in as administrator so I can show you a few more things that we can do. I don't know if you guys have noticed how I've been logging in. I have LastPass on my computer and it's a password, it's a password uh, safe locker. So I have one password that I use to get into it. It's pretty difficult to, uh, to remember. And, and then I have all of my login stuff in that, in that software. So it remembers and I have the attachment on Google. So anytime I go into something, um, I don't let Google or Windows remember my passwords for me. I only use LastPass. So when I log into something, if I've got multiple accounts, it'll let me use that drop down. So I don't have to remember all the passwords. It will also help me generate random passwords that you and I will never remember. Um, and if you lose your access to LastPass and because your password is so hard, you will have a very difficult time getting into most things. So um, if you're looking for a password protection, that's, that's a really good one. All right, so we'll talk about a few things that we have access to as an administrator. So if you need something that you can't do and you need me to do it, you can reach out. Oh, I didn't go over this upload. I forgot one thing. If you're logged in, you guys should see this as members, as regular members, this upload button over here. You can use this upload button to upload into any gallery that you want. You just click it. It'll ask you if you wanna go into a new gallery, an existing gallery, or if you're gonna upload photos. So if you wanted to go into an existing gallery, it will then bring this up, member galleries, find your folder, figure out where you want to upload it, tell it that you're done, and then it's going to ask you to drag and drop. You can also upload from Dropbox, and you can upload directly from Lightroom, um, and you can connect it to Google Photos. I think that might be how one of our members is getting their pictures in here, and you can upload directly from the SmugMug app too. 
Okay, hey, Pat, in, in, uh, in order to uh, upload galleries, you got to have a folder in the club site. Is that right? So there has to be at least one folder where you're going to upload to. For instance, um, if I wanted to upload into a new gallery, I have to tell it where that gallery is going to go. Yeah. Um, because if you don't tell it where you want the gallery to go, you won't ever find it. I mean, I could find it, but you, you may not be able to find it once you do it. If you're going to upload into an existing gallery, the, that gallery needs to be somewhere. And because I'm asking everybody to set up folders that you then put, you can then put your galleries in because your folder is going to have your picture on it. And that's where gonna, you're going to store all your galleries or okay. your folders full of galleries. Think of it as like a file cabinet, right? You don't, you don't yeah. want to have just random papers in your file cabinet. You have file folders. And then in those file folders, you have them organized. And, and if you're super OCD, you might have a file folder for gas receipts and you might have folders in that folder for each month. So all your gas receipts are there, but they're all separated by month in separate folders in a main folder. This is the same thing. Okay. All right. Um, so we've gone over the photos tab. That one takes you to see all the pictures that have been uploaded um, newest to oldest, including the pictures that are uploaded from members' phones that are saving to our site on their those pictures are going directly into their galleries. They're not just going someplace random. And then you have the organized tab. You guys have access to that. And you have access to the photo site tab, which takes you to the home page. If you want to learn something about SmugMug, another thing that you have access to as a regular member login is SmugMug help. You can click this SmugMug right over here in the left upper corner. And that wasn't what I wanted. Go back to photo site. I'm sorry, click the question mark. Right side, support center. SmugMug has a lot of information. If you don't know what to do and you can't get a hold of me, you can always go in here and look through some of the help that's in here. There's tons of information. There's YouTube videos about how to use SmugMug. There's so much information, just like everything else in the world today. If you get lost and you can't reach anybody and you absolutely need a fix right now, could probably find it here. All right. Things that you don't have access to that I do that we can change. Selling tools. Now, I'll probably send out an email. It's probably going to be the best way to do this is I'll generate a price list and I'll email it out as an Excel or a PDF and, and get some feedback so we know what to do. Um, I believe that the sales to date are Karen purchasing her own photos as prints. And they didn't have any markup on them, so she just paid the price that was there. But I can see sales history. So once we get ready to proceed as a club to allow people to buy images, the way we're going to manage it, or at least the way I, I think we're going to manage it, we, we haven't really worked out all the kinks yet, um, is I can go in here and look by month. So I can look at this month. Or if we're going to do it by quarter, I can look by this quarter. And I can apply. And we haven't had any pictures purchased this quarter or this month. But I can see any photos that have sold. So if we decide to do it monthly, then before the meeting, you know, two weeks after our, our meeting in September, I would have to go in here and I would have to look to see if we've had any sales. And if we had sales, I'd have to look at the order details and see whose pictures sold. And then it's going to tell me in this here what our price was, what the base price was, any difference, fees and adjustments. If there was a coupon applied, we're not going to do coupons. It's a really good way to lose money right now. Um, and then it'll tell me what the profit is. And SmugMug pays out automatically if you have over $500 in profit um, on the seventh of the month. If you want to get paid every month, you have to tell SmugMug by the 25th or 26th of the prior month that you want to pay out. And then they will cut that, any profit you have, they will cut that check to you. Once we get ready to do this, it will go directly into the camera club's account because that's what we're going to have attached to it. And then we would just have to pull that money out of the account to give it to the members that it needs to go to. And then we would also provide the member um, 
documentation from this page showing this is what pictures sold from your and this is how much profit you have. That way you've got the documentation showing what you should get and we're able to give you those funds. That's what we're working towards. The club's never done it, um, but we all think it's a good tool and, and we're kind of just working up some ideas to make it work so it's the best for everybody. Any questions about the selling tools? All right, so we have Priceless and I'm not gonna go into this too far, but um, SmugMug has four print companies that they use, Bay Photo, WHCC, Easy Print Labs, and then there's one over in Europe that they use. Um, I have our, I have this gallery currently set up with Bay Photo. I have um, Easy Photos set up on one of my galleries on my website and I have not been tremendously amazed by the quality of the pictures. I have a few people that have ordered from there. They have loved them because they don't know anything about photography or picture image and they'd probably be happy with CVS prints. Um, but I, Bay Photos prints are a lot better. I wish I could attach MPIX or Miller's, but I can't. Um, a lot of people have requested that they be included and I don't know if SmugMug has any plans to add any more print companies or not. But Bay Photos qualities are pretty good. The biggest issue I have right now with the, the pricing on SmugMug is that the base prices on the companies that they're using are really high and SmugMug does take a cut. So, and I, I think SmugMug initially puts your default profit at 300%. And I can tell you that nobody is gonna buy a picture when it's marked up 300%. It's just not gonna happen unless it's a corporate, you know, they might. Um, my motocross people, they are not gonna pay 300% of a 24 by 20 price that starts at I think 20 bucks or 24 bucks with no markup. Um, so I, I encourage people to buy my digital downloads because I make a lot more money on digital downloads. And then I tell them to go print it picture perfect or MPIX and I kind of direct my traffic. Let's see, we'll cancel that. Um, this is all just business stuff that we can set up and have access to. There's a lot of ins and outs. I'll save it. No, I don't want to do that. All right. The other thing that we can do, if you decide you want to get your own site, or if you have an idea for our site and you, maybe we could make some changes. I'm always up, always open to making some changes. We can change a lot of things, but this is how SmugMug is set up. It's blocks. I don't know if anybody's used like um, Wix or Squarespace or um, what's the other, Zenfolio. They're all kind of set up the same way. You insert blocks of things that you can pick. You have options over here of things that you can add. And then you put those things in and they go in specific places um, and you have a specific layout or a theme. This page has, has a theme that we're using and that's why it has the layout that it has. I can add background images um, that show up, but I don't do that because it's really distracting on this particular website. I can, I can kind of change the layout, change the margins. I can change the entire site to look the same. I can change just the homepage. I can change the way the folders look. I can change just the way the galleries look. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes in here. If you know anything about HTML and CSS coding, you can add that stuff. That is how I added the, the PayPal thing. Um, and you, if you make a bunch of changes on, on a site, if you decide you want to get this site or you have it and you make a bunch of changes and you don't really want it to go live yet, you don't have to make it go live. You can preview it to see what it looks like. And then you can click done and you can say save for later or yeah, I really didn't like it, let's discard it. And I don't wanna make any changes, so I'm just gonna discard it. All right, any questions? No? We went over a whole lot of stuff. If you guys have any questions about anything on this site, please reach out. Um, there's a lot of stuff that there's even stuff that I don't know. I had to do research to figure out how to get this application on here. SmugMug does not really want to do business with PayPal. They would rather, um, 
you know, get all the profit. That's one of the reasons they have this site set up for photographers. So figuring out how to get the PayPal link on here to work was um, a bit of a, a research challenge for me, but I like learning new stuff. So and yeah. Is there any way that you can put a, a link on here to another website? Yes. I have my own personal site. There is actually, and if I was going to do it as a member, I tell you what I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would go member galleries and I would find my page or my folder and I would go into my folder and then hmm, I'd probably have to set this up for you. I'm going to try something real quick because I'm not sure because I haven't done that, but I'm going to try to customize my folder and see what happens. I'll see you later, you all. Bye. All right. So I can add social icons to my folder. There's Facebook. I can add a profile. That's not what I wanted. And we don't need to take up other people's time. This is not a question that other people have. There is going to be a way to do it. If you want to do it, I can make it happen. Okay. Because it'll it'll be here. Okay. I, I know we can put links on here. Um, uh, it might take me a bit to figure it out because I haven't done it, but I can definitely make it. I can definitely get it on here. Okay. That'd be great. Because I bet we can even do it here. We can put a text box. So so if I do that and then I highlight it and I click this little link button. Let's just do this. Oh, yep, we got it. Yep. Open a new window, make sure it's yes. Yep. Open a new window, add a link, done. Now I'm going to say done and I'm going to publish it because I want it to go live. And Good job. Bam, there's my link. Damn, watch her go. So, yes, I can put your website link on your folder. Okay. I can put it anywhere. You know, if you if you want it in the in the member directory, if you want it in the member gallery, the other thing we could do. And I haven't done this. Uh, I haven't done this yet because I feel like this page is already pretty cluttered. And kind of the rule of thumb on yeah. on websites that do well is that people don't have to scroll to see things. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I have tried to keep this page as clean as possible. Um, but we definitely. I, I, I just want it over on my my page. Is where I'd be interested in. Well, the one thing the one thing that we could do without even putting it on the front page is under member galleries. I could have mm -hmm. this be a drop down just like I have this. Oh. And this could be member galleries, member oh. directory and oh. member websites. Yeah. And then I could have a page that all those member websites are listed on. So everybody's website could be put on here. That'd be nice. I can make that happen. So if you guys wanna send me your, your website links, if you have a website, I'll get that done. It's just jerryburnell.com. All right. All right. If anybody else has a website and you want your website to be listed, I'm going to add that page. I think that's a great idea. Um, just email me your website and I'll, I'll get them all on there. And I'll send an email out to the club so that if anybody else is not on this call has one, they can, they can get it to me. Any other questions? Be great. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you got to join us. And for anybody that didn't see the email, Jerry's got a whole bunch of frames and pictures and and foam core that he's selling. Um, so reach out to Jerry and hit him up if you need some frames. I went over there and he's got a ton of frames and just 
pictures everywhere. And if you know anybody needs prints for, I don't know, nursing home or their own home or anything, or if you want some. Okay, there's your plug, Jerry. Uh, okay. All right, okay. I think we're done. I think we've Thank got you. everything. There aren't any other questions. I was about right. It was almost two hours. It's great. I appreciate everybody that joined. And, and like I said, I, I am recording it. So um, I'll click. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Pat. If you guys have any other questions, just hit me up and I'll, I'll try to get everything answered that I can. All right, we'll see you guys Thank later. You, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Bye. Have fun. Bye. Thanks, Pat. Bye. Thanks, Pat.